So continuing chapter 10 notes, um, I'm going to work a few problems here and show you some uh, different ways of approaching them. So I have this one, which is going to be pretty much a strictly like a, a stoichiometry type problem. How many grams of Bi2S3 will form when 120 grams of bismuth nitrate, bismuth 3 nitrate in a water solution is reacted with 9.01 liters of H2S gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 745 tors? So anytime you see a problem like this, uh, write a balanced chemical equation again. Something like this on the test I will give you or the quiz. Um, again, when we're doing notes, I sometimes uh, want you to remember some other things. Anytime you're given a gas, a temperature, a pressure, and a volume, uh, think PV equals NRT. Okay, you can always find stuff from that. Uh, and I'm uh, given uh, the grams here of the bismuth nitrate, um, uh, bismuth 3 nitrate. Uh, so you could take uh, that bits of information and find what you're looking for. So I use PV equals NRT um, in my formula here, the 745 tors, I got to convert to atmospheres. I like to do it that way. Or you could find another R with tors. Um, I have liters and then I have my Kelvin. So I end up with 0.361 moles of H2S. But I need to look at the balanced chemical equation. I need to take that 120 of my other reactant and figure out how many moles I get with that. So if I take the 120 and I divide it by its molar mass, which is about 395, about 395, I get about 0.304 moles of bismuth 3 nitrate. Okay, so then I look at my, it's a two to three relationship, two to three relationship. So essentially I have to have 1.5 more of this um, of H2S because it's a three to two. And again, you could show your work over here, but turns out this is your limiting reactant of the H2S. So you have to look at the number of moles and figure out who is going to limit you um, so again, this is another good example of like a stoichiometry problem with gas loss. So I have to take the moles of my limiting reagent and find my products. So in this case, they want to find Bi2S3 as the product. So I go back to my balanced chemical equation. It's a one to three relationship. And I add up the molar mass. It's about 514.3 grams for every mole. So my final answer is about 62 grams of Bi2S3. All right, so next problem, um, next two problems. Why I put them in the notes is to point out that yes, we could always use PV equals NRT, and we could always find the number of moles and do calculations from there. But we could also do things in pressure units because pressure is related to number of moles, I could do that instead. So for example, I have a 5.75 liter bomb filled with hydrogen at 250 atmospheres, has nitrogen added until the pressure is 350 atmospheres. What is the final pressure in the bomb if the reaction goes to completion at a constant temperature of 350 degrees Celsius? So again, it sounds exciting because I said the word bomb, but really just draw a circle over here for our bomb. And what I have is um, in the container, I have 250 atmospheres of um, hydrogen. And then I'm piping in 100 atmospheres of nitrogen. And hydrogen and nitrogen do react. So I am going to get a chemical reaction, which I have written down here. Um, and the total volume here is 5.75 liters. And the reason it's called a bomb is because I'm not going to change the liters here. Um, so even if pressure does build up, it's going to um, not change the volume and the temperature is not going to change again there's some you know again you might have to account for that in the calculation or you may have to put this in a container that could keep that temperature stable because this is an exothermic process so here is my nitrogen plus hydrogen gives me ammonia this is called the haber process it's a very famous equation um, so i could take the amount of atmospheres of hydrogen and the liters and i could um, take the temperature and I could find the um, amount of moles. And I could do the exact same thing with the nitrogen being piped in. And then I could convert them to pressures and do all of that. But instead, I'm going to do this calculation with pressures. So my initial pressure 
for nitrogen is 100 atmospheres. Okay, my initial pressure of my hydrogen is 250. And I have no ammonia at the beginning. So this is what I call my pressure initial, okay? Then change happens, okay? I have to take the nitrogen and the hydrogen and make the ammonia. So you will see that this side is gonna be negative and this is going to be positive. This is always gonna be proportional to the equation itself. Okay, so I know that um, if I look at this proportionately, if I have 100 atmospheres of nitrogen, how many atmospheres of hydrogen do I need to react with that 100? Well, it's a one to three, so I would need 300 atmospheres of hydrogen to react with that much nitrogen. I don't have 300. So therefore, the hydrogen has to be my limiting reagent, okay? So if that's my limiting, this is going to go down to essentially zero, okay? And so then I know that my change here is going to be proportional. So it's going to be a third of the 250 that I have here because it's a one to three relationship. Well, this comes out to be somewhere around 17 atmospheres. So this is the pressure final at the end of the experiment. So what is my pressure of my ammonia? Well, that's going to be what we call two thirds of the 250 because uh, this is a two to three relationship with the hydrogen. So that comes out to be about 167 atmospheres, 167 atmospheres. So what is my total pressure? Well, all you gotta do is add the 17 plus the 167 and you end up with about 180 atmospheres. So that's the total pressure. So always keep in mind that the pressure of the nitrogen versus the pressure of the total is always going to be proportional to the number of moles of nitrogen versus the number of moles total. So that is why I could do calculations with pressure units, especially, again, this is all taking place in the same container, same temperature, nothing else is changing. So this is another way you can solve problems instead of always going to number of moles. You could still go to moles and do all of that, but then you gotta convert moles and then go back to pressure units. So see if you could try this next one, kind of using that as a guide. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the balanced chemical equation and then I'm gonna have you try this, okay? So I have BrF5 decomposes at high temperature into its elements. So it decomposes into bromine and fluoride, uh, a fluorine, and it is going to be um, balanced according to two and five, two, one, and five. And these are all gases. Okay, if I'm given a 0.1 mole sample of BR, BRF5 and I have a 10 liter container and 1500 Kelvin, the total pressures was at 2.12 atmosphere. Find the far, partial pressure of each gas. So see if you could try it. I'm gonna come back in and show you the answer. So um, I was given a 0.1 mole sample, 10 liter container and 1500 Kelvin. Um, so I could plug that into PV equals NRT and I could find my pressure uh, in atmospheres, 1.23 atmospheres. So I could set it up this way. So I'm starting with that much pressure and I have none of my elements, I have none of my products to begin with. So like before I have changed, but this time I don't really have any information um, as to how much this decomposes. Um, so I have to go by the proportion. So this is gonna be minus two X and this is gonna be X and this is gonna be five X. So it's always gonna be proportional to the balanced chemical equation. And then I could take um, the starting minus the two X, this is X and this is five X. Well, I do know the total pressure is 2.12 atmospheres. So I could take all of those and get them equal to each other. I could add them all together to get to 2.12 atmospheres. So I could find my X as being 0.223 atmospheres from the calculation here. Then all I gotta do is take the X and plug it back into each one of these to find the overall pressures. So 
The pressure of the BRF5 is going to be the 1.23, the starting, minus 2 times the X. So it's about 0.79 atmospheres. BR2 is just X, so that's 0.22. And again, I have two sig figs here. And F2 is 5 times that, so I get approximately 1.1. Again, so this is just another way you can approach the problems is instead of doing everything in moles is to try to do stuff using pressure.